Guys, I'm Lisa Friedrich. I'll be your host for the evening. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to bring up our first comic of the night, Mr. Eric McGurney, everybody! Hey, good evening, folks. Uh, I like this place a lot. Just gonna say that now. I also like the inverse relationship between how much I like this place, which is a lot, as I've established, and how much the name makes it seem like I'd like this place, which is very little. This place is called the Spider House, which sounds like the worst. <laughs> a house for spiders, where spiders live, and just spiders? No, that sounds terrible. That sounds like the last place I want to be in my entire life. Also, it's a ballroom and I can't dance, but I'm really focusing on the spider part. I'm not caring for that. So, a lot of guys will learn how to play the acoustic guitar to pick up women. I'll tell you right now, I'm one of those guys. I'll also tell you that it works. Because every time I get a girl back to my room, she loses her entire mind when I pull out that acoustic guitar, look her straight in the eyes, and play the monster mash. <laughs> that is a sexy, sensual song about monsters having a party. <laughs> Just what it is. <clears throat> Trying to save money lately, but I don't have a savings account. What I do have, however, is a swear jar, and I know most of the cusses. <laughs> so next time I feel like my finances need to be in order, I'm just drinking half a bottle of Old Crow and then playing a video game meant for children. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that had to be part of the elevator pitch for Mario, right? Well, what we've got here is we've got this little Italian plumber and he runs from the left to the right, and he jumps over bottomless pits, and he fights turtles and Goombas. I, I'll tell you what a Goomba is later. I, I don't think it's a slur. <laughs> and for kids, they'll have a lot of fun, and it'll be like their favorite guy. And for adults, they'll yell at them as if they're going through a messy divorce. Little <laughs> fun game. I have some really terrible news, and I hate to bring the mood down so early in my set, but uh, I don't know what happens when we die. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint everyone, because you saw me walk up here, and you just thought, oh, a small bearded man, he'll know. <laughs> but I don't. I have no idea whatsoever. My only opinion on that matter is that I hope it's not ghosts. I don't want to hang out with ghosts. They seem like jerks. And they seem like people I could never relate with. Because if I'm hanging out with a ghost, and he is telling me that he was a turn-of-the-century oil baron who died in a workers' uprising and was torn limb by limb by the very workers on which he built his tycoon his empire of oil baronry, then that dude's not going to be impressed. When I tell him that I grabbed my car into a tree, looking at my iPod, trying to find the perfect Weezer song. <laughs> oh, what do you do as a ghost? You mostly try to get revenge on those who caused your untimely death? That's cool. I'll mostly warn teenagers against being too into Weezer. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot of wisdom. <laughs> I just feel it's true. And I, if I was to impart any of my wisdom to the younger generation, it would be this. I know it's cheesy, but education is important. Whether it be formal or informal, gaining more wisdom cannot hurt you in life. It can only help you, and you need that in the crazy world we live in. And don't just learn things you're interested in. Learn any subject imaginable except for clowns. <laughs> That's creepy. No one likes anyone who knows too much about clowns. You have never heard anyone say, oh, uh, have you met John? Great guy, knows a lot about clowns. That's not something anyone's ever said. 
I feel like you should be allowed to know the names of three real life clowns and no more. <laughs> you get Bozo, that's a gimme. You get John Wayne Gacy, and don't know too much about him either. That's weird in a different way. But it's the world we're living in. You're going to find out who he is eventually. And then third, free space. Whoever you want. Maybe you know a clown. Maybe you yourself are a clown. I don't care. That's your third one. Maybe you're good at two. Good on you. That's a smart move only knowing two clowns. <laughs> four or more clowns, take these handcuffs and put them on yourself. Because you deserve to live in a prison and nobody wants to touch you. Not even to take you to that prison. Despite what I just said, I actually feel really bad for real life legitimate clowns. Because we think the worst of them no matter what. But if a clown's in it for the right reasons, a clown might be the best person on the planet. The entire desire behind their job is just, well, I wanted to bring joy to children. I wanted to entertain those who are truly innocent, maybe the people who deserve happiness the most in this world. And to that we respond, boo! Get away from everyone! Get a real job, like pornographer! Or pornographer's sleazy friend! Just not a clown. Guys, my spirited defense of clowns. Maybe not everyone's on board. Well, that's fine. Uh, so you guys know that game you play when you're a kid where you spin a globe and then you put your hand on a random part of that globe and that's where you're going to live when you grow up? I feel like we all played it because it's a great game. It is an amazing way to create near impossible expectations <laughs> from a young age. Because when you're a kid, you're like six, you're spinning that globe, and you're like, all right, when I grow up, I'm going to live in Tokyo, Japan. And then 30 years later, you're like, did I land on Tokyo, Japan, or Gary, Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> this did not work out as planned. But me, I'm going to tell you this about myself. I'm going to tell you about my dad. My dad was this old, eccentric history professor. And that stopped me from playing this game because he didn't care at all for the world of the now and of current events. He only cared about the past. So he didn't keep any globes in our house. He just kept a ton of old maps from like the 1400s, real old timey like se sepia tone maps basically. So I tried to play this game and I closed my eyes and I put my finger on that map and now I live in an ocean dragon. <laughs> it sucks. I was really going for that angry baby blowing wind at the pirate ship. <laughs> but it would. Got a new pet recently. That's very exciting. It's great to have a new pet. I feel like you can tell a lot about a person by the name they give their pet. Like for me, for instance, I gave my pet the name of Billy Corgi. Tells you two things about me. One, I love smashing pumpkins slash Zwan frontman Billy Corgan. And two, I'm a crazy person. Because, because Billy Corgi is not a corgi. He's not a dog at all. He's actually just a knife. <laughs> I've glued googly eyes to a cute little knife. When it gets cold outside, I put a sweater on my pet knife. And twice a day, I take my knife for a walk, which is just me tying a rope around a knife and dragging it across the sidewalk. Very happy pet owner. Got married recently. To the sea. I got, I got married to the sea. And people ask me, Eric, is it weird being married to a gigantic body of water? Yes. Yes, it is. But it's also very rewarding because my new wife covers 70% of this planet. And she has been alive since the dawn of time. 
She has killed millions of people. <laughs> and no force on earth can stop her. And she's filled with shrimp. <laughs> She is my immortal, murdering, red lobster lady, and we're so happy together. Boy, that air bug sure can play a lot of sports. <laughs> and yet, the justification in all of those air bug movies, and really the entire genre of animals playing sports films, it's always the same. It's always, well, there's nothing in the rule book saying a dog can't play women's field hockey. <laughs> and that's fine. That is totally fine. Well, that is a terrible precedent to set. Well, there's nothing in the rule book saying a dog can't commit genocide and kidnap children. That's a bit of dialogue from the movie I've just been tapped to direct. Air Bud 10, the Joseph Coney story. <laughs> starring Air Bud as Joseph Coney. That is the entire title right there, which is very clumsy, but the super fans are already calling it ABX, Hanging with the Cone Dog. So that joke is a joke, but it is also a time machine. Back to 2012, when I should have written that joke. <laughs> like that is that is very much a joke that it seems like I should be dusting off after like a year of disuse. I wrote that in July. I wrote that thinking it's like, hey, do people still care about Joseph Coney? No, probably not. I have not seen a single Coney 2013 sign in the entire world. At this point, people just think he's a failed third party candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do this one last thing and wrap. Despite what people might think, I'm a huge fan of Cosmopolitan Magazine. It's my favorite magazine in the world because the things on the cover of Cosmopolitan are the craziest things in the world. It's always stuff like 93 orgasmic sex chips, 800 ways to have a sizzling hot sex summer, did a human being write that? <laughs> or did you get that out of a magical hat filled with buzzwords? Because if a human being wrote that, then I want to be that human being. Because then I can write the craziest stuff in the world. No one will care. No one will even think it's weird. I can write stuff like, trap your man in a sex pleasure prison. <laughs> 43 bedroom tips to make him forget his awful childhood. <laughs> Sex so hot, it'll burn down your house, and then you can collect the insurance money and start a new identity in rural Montana. Thanks, guys. American Gurney.